Hey folks, how are you doing? Today is the 4th of July 2023, so happy Independence Day to my US followers. Um, so today's video, I'm going to be looking at the subject of entities and probably knowing my videos, branching off into all other types of things, mainly the New Age movement that is currently... It started off as... <laughs> It started off as something that had true potential and but I just think it's got really toxic. And I'm going to explain why in this video at different parts. And just I've had my hair done different colours, pinks, fuchsias. Um, <laughs> I, do you know this morning I was like getting ready and I thought I hope I don't get any comments of oh my god I can't actually concentrate on the video because I'm just looking at the colours, different colours of the hair and like there's lighter pink on the bottoms and yeah I just thought I'd go all pink and get some fuchsia put around the front. I've never ever done a colour like this. Anyway, entities. This video isn't also about fear. I don't want you to watch this video and go into fear and because really there is nothing to fear. There really isn't anything to fear. And I think one of the worst things you can do with this subject is to go into fear. Because one of the things that some entities feed off is our fear. So I'm looking down because I've got some notes because I didn't want to lose my track like I usually do. <laughs> so why are you doing this video? Numerous reasons. Um, comments from previous shamanic videos that I've done when I briefly mentioned entities and people have said, can you tell us more about that? But also as well, some of the content that I'm seeing online at the minute and coming from the new age movement, and I'm going to call it the new age movement because it's becoming more and more like that. And so basically before I start, so you know that my name's Claire Thackeray, okay? And if you're if you're not new to my channel you, and you've been on my website, you know that I'm a shamanic practitioner, Reiki master, clairvoyant, okay? So I'm not just some influencer that's popped up out of nowhere, that is just blithering on lots of stuff and nonsense. Um, so talking about entities is the field in which I work so not all the time but when I have healing sessions the shamanic healing sessions that's when shamanic healing can remove entities it can remove entities from people from places from buildings from situations so it's something that I do regular okay so again I'm not just coming from nowhere I'm not somebody that does another modality that's jumping on a bandwagon because that's something else that's happening and there's also been lately over the past few weeks few months an attack and it feels like an attack on healers and therapists holistic therapists holistic healers um from the new age community from the new age paradigms that are out there at the minute and many of you that watch me are healers different forms of healers different different modalities and work differently and that's the thing about healers all healers work differently and it's, it's crazy it's crazy and i've and i've seen it numerous times of new agers on social media um youtube tiktok instagram facebook basically saying to people you don't need to go to a healer they started off with this by saying you don't need to go to doctors then they moved to you don't need to go to therapists or psychotherapists and now it's got to you don't need to go to healers what you do need to do is follow me on instagram follow me on youtube and i will help you or you can join my patreon class and my patreon channel will also help you and when you think about healers have been around since the beginning of time in some way shape or form and healers are a valid valid part of this world and they're a valid part of the awakening yes i believe there is an awakening happening i believe there is a frequency on this planet that is increasing but do i follow the new age movement i don't anymore i did fall down that trap and it's something that gradually i think you start to see you start to question it and i think the subject of entities it's an important subject to talk about as a healer because they do exist. And I'm going to, I'm going to describe to you the different forms of entities. Um, sacred practices, so healers practice sacred practices that have been passed down and passed down and changed and tweaked in order to, in order to encompass the times that we are, the, the times that we are living in presently. And 
The New Age community, I knew I'd start waffling about You see, I needed to do a video about the New Age community as well. So maybe this is going to be both. I'll do both. The New Age community consists of people that have just sprung from nowhere. That have no training, no qualifications. They've just got themselves on a platform. And some of them have been around a while. Some of them have got holistic businesses. But are starting to deviate towards this more and more. And... A lot of our sacred practices we're losing. We're losing without even realising it because of some of the paradigms and some of the ways that in which are coming through via the via the new age community. And yes, sorry, just taking my time with this one. So what are entities? Anything can be classed as an entity. We are entities, entity beings. We're all entities. Everything is an entity. A bottle can be an entity. Um, anything can be, a, a program can be an entity. So when we talk about entities, that, that, that can mean a whole range of things. But I'll just cover that. What I'm not going to do is I'm not going to break them down into names because there's thousands of them. There's thousands of them. So I've tried to make it as basic as I can. So we've got demonic entities, of which I have seen with my physical eye. I have seen demons, but with my third eye. Well, I've seen them with my third eye, but also with my physical eye. I've seen it twice with my physical eye. So we've got demonic entities. We've got demonic galactic entities. We've got galactic entities, as in like reptilians and greys, etc, etc, etc. I'm not going to go into a big thing of naming them all, because I don't want to draw that into this video, if that makes sense. We've got the elementals. So fairies can be entities. Um, biscuits can be entities. Trolls can be entities. There's light and dark in all of these species as well. Trapped souls. So people that have died and that can't move on. They can't move on to the light. For whatever reason, through shock, through trauma, through programming, maybe they think they've done lots of mistakes and they feel as though they don't deserve to go to the light. Maybe there's still loved ones on the earth plane that they don't want to leave. Maybe it was a shocking death that came in really quickly. So we've got trapped souls that can also attach into our energy field. And these can include loved ones. So yes, your loved ones can become entities which is why when we have somebody that dies, we must make sure that everything is done correctly to release that soul, to release that body. So I've said this in client sessions, when people get cremated and people take the ashes and they put them in the living room or they put them next to the bed or they bury them in the garden or they just keep them or they turn them into um, ashes jewellery, rings, necklaces, is a definite no-no, it's cruel. I know it sounds cruel what I'm saying when you've got a loved one that you're struggling to let go of, but you anchor them and you don't allow them to move forward. And eventually they can become an entity on the body because you don't allow them to move on. So what happens is the body doesn't realise it's only my son, it's only my daughter, it's only my mum, my partner. This soul is a safe soul. It reacts in the way it would if you've got a demon attached to you, if you've got a reptilian attached to you, because it's a foreign object. So the body starts to flare, so you can become ill, you can get illness and disease, you can get addiction, you can get depression, you can get anxiety, you can get mood swings, all kinds of things. You can become lethargic, you can become erratic, you can become what we call looping, where you just loop and you can't let go of that person. Um, pets can also become entities. So when people's pets die, at the minute, there is a real issue with people's um, healthy interactions with pets. Maybe this is another video that we need to do where people literally become obsessed over their pets to a point where their pet is treated like a child. I know it's a triggering, I know it's a triggering subject, but it has to be a subject that we talk about. And to a point that when the pet dies, they can't let they can't let the pet go, so they keep the ashes. And it's the same with the, with with humans. They keep the ashes. They bury the ashes in in the garden. They scatter the ashes in the garden. When really with ashes, and I and I say this to my clients, um, ashes need to it needs to be a day once the dust has settled. Okay, pardon the pun. And you pick a day where you go to the seaside or you go to the woods or you go out into the mountains, somewhere sacred, somewhere clean, somewhere where they're not going to be built on top of. And you can take certain family members, you can make it into a nice day where you go for a meal, or you take a picnic, 
make it a nice happy day of celebration and you release them you release them back to mother earth you release them back to the wind the sun like let them go and that is so much better than um burying them in your garden i remember as a teenager when i lived in an area of leeds there was somebody that actually buried her husband in the front garden and he and i know a clairvoyant went to the house as a it was a friend and she walked in and he was actually sat in the living room as a ghost and she couldn't go in because his presence was so strong so you know and again when you look but when i look back to that house that house was on a busy street in, in a big built-up city and there she popped her husband. She thought she was doing the best thing for her and maybe for him. But actually she anchored him and she brought a heaviness into the house. Um, objects can become entities. So these would come from past lives. So if you've been in a past life battle and you've been stabbed, you could have the sword still in your shoulder. If you've been hung, you could have the rope still around your neck. If you've been beheaded, you can still have the cut and the slice through your neck. If you've had a but you've like a with a bow and arrow, you can still have the arrow. You can like in a I, I once had a past life where I died in a jousting accident. So I once had a, a jousting pole right through the middle and I had that removed years ago. The shaman, you could feel the shaman actually twisting it out and pulling it out of my centre. I also died in battle in one past life and I had, you know, I don't know what they're called, but you know the fighting poles and it was right up my middle and that was pulled out. So those are entities as well, objects that have been on us when we've been, when we've been killed in past lives. If you've been a slave and you've still got your shackles on, people still have their shackles around their, around their wrists, their ankles, their neck. Um, Jewellery from previous incarnations or things that are still within the energy field that can be classed as an entity. Signs and symptoms that we've got an entity again. This is a vast. This video will not cover everything. I'm going to try and get to the bare basics, but it's a, it's a difficult subject to do because it's vast. So signs and symptoms of having an entity are addiction, overeating. Um, lack of self-care, self-sabotaging behaviour, depression, anxiety, overwhelm, anger, resentment, jealousy, bitterness, um, not being able to sleep, not being able to settle, not being able to have healthy relationships, not being able to have healthy physical relationships, to be a deviant, you can be deviant, people that thieve, people that... And again, with all of those, with all of those that I've mentioned, there can also be other reasons for that. But when you've got a client and they start to say, you know, you know, hearing voices is a big one. Um, when people say to you, God, you were foul last night, and you go, No, I wasn't. And they go, Yes, you were. So you've gone out drinking with a friend, and that friend says, God, you were vile last night, and you actually can't remember. So having memory lapses, and sometimes you can have memory lapses without even having the alcohol or the, or the, or the drugs as well. So yeah, um, being tearful, being anxious, being fearful, being fearful of the world, because also what a lot of entities do, so these wouldn't necessarily be relatives or pets. These would be things like the demonic stuff, galact the dark galactics. I'm not gonna start naming them. They would look at you as a, as a, as a person. What they, what, what they tend to do is, um, suss out where your weakness is so if you like a bit of overindulgence let's have some fun they'll make you overeat even more if you've got a penchant for a nice little glass of wine on a night never mind one glass we're going to take you to the bottle maybe even more uh, maybe if they see you've got a lack of self-confidence they will make you and they will put you into situations where you maybe do things sexually that you wouldn't normally do and you start to feel attracted to the wrong type of people because they're really good because we're so open without even realizing it even when you put your walls up they can see that they're in, they're an energetic being don't forget whereas your guides will show respect and they won't come into your thought process and they won't overwhelm you and they won't use your vulnerabilities against you and they'll, they'll keep a boundary space with you these things don't they'll, they'll use it against you it's like when you tell somebody your secrets 
and they'll use it against you. So illness can also be a sign that there's an entity. Again, with all of these, there's also other reasons. It's like a, it's not like a checklist. Um, this video is going to take some open-mindedness to, to it's not a black and white situation um, signs and symptoms erratic behavior as well and there's different levels of it I remember when my guide first taught me about entities and he showed me an apple and he said think of think of the human as a, as a whole juicy apple it comes to earth it's a whole juicy apple and then an entity takes a bite out of it. And another, some people who's got a little few bites taken out of them, some literally that they've been, they've had so many bites that it's rotten. Does that make sense? So there's different layers. Um, and depending on your traumas as well. So say if you drink heavily, and say if you've gone got you've got a past trauma, so that's drinking heavily, past trauma. Ew fun time so it's weakening your vibration it's weakening your energy field so it's making you more open to it so the more that you can try and get on top of addictions get on top of your health get on top of your self-care get on top of everything heal your traumas go to a therapist that's another thing that's out there at the minute by the new age community you don't need to go to a therapist if you need to go to a therapist you go to a therapist you do you go to a healer you know you speak to your doctor because not all doctors are going to throw things at you if that makes sense um you know doing all you can to help yourself heal so those are the signs and symptoms and there's and there's, and there's many more as well how can we catch them how can we catch them so we can oh god now this again you're gonna to have to keep an open mind trauma illness alcohol recreational drugs all recreational drugs including the ones that the spiritual community are telling you to go whoa you know if you're going to an ayahuasca and it's not a sacred space for ayahuasca and it's not a shaman that's doing ayahuasca or someone that is ethical and trained you are open because the thing is when you're out of it whether it's a good out of it or a bad out of it, you're out of it, so you're not in control of yourself. Um, how can we catch them? Horror movies, horror books, rabbit holes. So the rabbit holes that are out there in, guess what, the awakening community at the minute. And I'm going to share a story here. I think it was round about 2018. I... You start, you know, you start looking, finding certain things out, and you start inquiring about certain things. I googled something. I googled a certain symbol. Let's just put it that way. And I remember googling it and looking at it, and I nearly collapsed. I nearly collapsed, and it took me a while to come back from that. It really did take me a while to come back from that to to recover from that, and. So when we go down these rabbit holes, so the conspiracy rabbit holes, and yes, things do happen, and yes, the world isn't as we see it, but there's also a lot of smoke and mirrors within that community, within the truth community. So being mindful of the rabbit holes that you're going down there because there are entities down there waiting for you. And a lot of entities, believe you me, actually attach into people to put this stuff out there. You've got to be so careful. And again, this isn't, oh, you've got to be so careful, you've got to be so careful. It's not that, you've got to be careful of where has this come from? Who are these people that are putting that out there? Because um, they actually thrive off that. And I see it in the comments sometimes, not often, or I get an email and these people are just going, and you can see, I can see it, it's like, I wish you could see it. I'm not going to email them back and say, I think you've got an entity. But you can see them just loop, loop. They think, you know, they think that they know it all. They think that they know all the global truths. They're very gaslighty. They're very patronising. And yeah, they'll have, they'll have caught up. They'll have caught a lot of things down those rabbit holes. Um, places like hospitals. I used to work in a hospital and that's where I caught a lot of mine from. Um, so hospitals, where there's illness, where there's disease, where there's grief, where there's pain, they thrive in. Police stations, fire stations, paramedics, um, graveyards, um, raves, nightclubs, pubs, clubs, as in nightclubs, um, houses and people where there's a lot of trauma, a lot of arguing. So if there's a house where there's a lot of arguing, they'll thrive into that. Um, 
And sometimes you just pick them up. Funerals can be a place that you can pick them up. And again, this isn't about, I'm not going to go to funerals. I'm not going to go to a club. I'm not going to do this. It's about being discerning. It's about being present and discerning with yourself. Um, I will go through ways in which you can help yourself. I'm going to go through removal as well. But self-help. Write it down so Claire doesn't forget. So how do we catch them? Again, there'll be loads of... I mean, you can catch them coming down the, the energetic birth kind to the family line. Um, you know, if you've got a real good mission to bring or a real good message to bring to the earth, they can latch on to stop you. So that's why a lot of people that want to do great things in the world, they minute it feel blocked. Because the block... I mean, the, again, that is a very vast subject. That is a very vast subject. But they can be blocked by entities. Um... removal this is going to be the touchy subject because the one of the reasons also why i did this video was i saw a video on youtube which was basically saying that you don't go to healers because if healers tell you this it was the most weirdest bizarrest video i've ever seen in my life basically if healers tell you that you've got an entity they're fake well okay but then this person went on to say you don't need to remove entities via a healer what you need to do is buy my spray not my sprays because i don't sell sprays but that's what they said so it's like wait a minute so you tell and, and this person then went on to say that you can do it yourself you can and i'm going to go into this where you can't and you can just remove it yourself you can just think yourself happy think yourself well and you can remove it yourself but buy my sprays to help you that's a red flag that's a red flag um because ultimately a spray, an angel spray, an energetic spray, unless it's something like this here, which is called Agua de Florida water, which the shamans use, and there's different forms of this as well. This gets used by the bucket load for the sessions. Um, look, look at these two bottles of it. Agua de Florida water. And again, even just spraying that and going, remove all entities, that's not going to help. That's not going to happen. And I'll tell you why in a bit. Um, an angel spray is not going to remove an entity. Um, an, an online meditation, because that's another thing. Follow my online meditation. Buy into my online meditation is not going to remove your entity. Um, join my Patreon group and you'll remove your... And remove, you're not going to get your entities removed. What will happen is... I mean, imagine this, right? Say you've got something behind you and... It's latched on big time. Anything light of light and of love irritates them. So say this is this this is an aqua say this is an aqua de Florida water, right? Say this is just a normal angel spray, right? And I'm gonna start spraying because I just want to remove that entity. What's gonna happen is that entity is gonna get triggered, it's gonna get aggravated. You know, those of you that have had sessions with me, like a, a tarot read, and you'll start talking about it. Have you noticed I go really vague? I got really vague about it. Even in the even in the Zoom course for the shamanic healing, I go really vague about it because I don't want to trigger it. Because you can so easily trigger it. Because the entity's got ears, it can hear, it can see, it can sense. It's 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 a living being. Maybe dark, but it's a living being with senses. So when we start, ch -ch 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 -ch, it's gonna it's gonna latch on big time. You know, in some cases, it may jump off you, but it may jump onto your baby. I'm not trying to fear. I'm not trying to fear you, but this is this is really important. This is really important. So, yes, going forward, you can use things like crystals to as you start to learn about these things, as you start to get your stuff cleared. Like, say, if I went back to work in the NHS now, okay, it's not going to happen, but say if I did, on a morning I'd sage, on a night I'd sage. I'd probably take something like, knowing what I know now, some aqua de Florida water. So when I felt low, I could spray it into my energy field. I'd probably get crystals and things. I'd look into like, Him you know, Himalayan salt baths, cause sea salt showers, that kind of thing, and, and incorporate that into my daily life. I'd probably, well, I wouldn't be able to wear this kind of stuff because you're not allowed in the NHS. But I, I'd have these kind of, maybe on my, on my ankle or in my pocket or... Um, crystals down your bra crystals in your pockets whatever but it's not going to remove an entity it's going to help to enable me during the day it's going to help to get me through um it's that's interesting my guide say it's a bit like using a wet wipe 
for a full body wash. So say you've been out and you've got dirty hands, you've, I don't know, you've been out in the garden or you've been out in the mud, you've been running in the mud and you just want to freshen yourself up with a baby wipe. You freshen yourself up, you clean yourself up so you can maybe eat, maybe get on the steering wheel and drive home. But you'll need to get your deep clean shower when you get home because the baby wipe isn't a deep clean shower. So that's what a crystal is and that's what an angel spray is. It's not a deep clean and it's not a tool to be used to remove something. You can use them as part of your um, chakra clearing or your meditation or something to use before you go to sleep, but it's not something right. I've got a demonic entity, so I'm gonna go and buy myself an angel spray. And ch -ch 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 -ch. It's not gonna happen. You're just gonna wind it up. You're gonna wind it up. And um, they can become quite rabid. <laughs> Sorry. They can become quite rabid when you try and remove them. Um, put some water. To be a healer that removes entities, it takes a lot of work. Every single day of your life, as a sh so, I'll talk about shamanic healing, is a not not a task. It's a teaching method. Everything, the amount of things I have to go through in order to get my energy filled up, the amount of things I've had to give up. Now I don't drink booze. You know, I'm having to, you know that I've been on a, a keep fit thing and I'm having to lose weight and you're having to do so much things, looking after your mental health, looking after your energetic health, looking after your space, looking after my land. You know, when I'm going to start doing entity removal, this land gets protected. The houses around me get protected. The people that live around me get protected. The people that live in this house get protected. So if I was just some Joe Bloggs, you know, if that springs off you, say if it does spring off you as if by magic, where's it going to go? Because if it does spring off you, it's then looking for another host. It's looking for another host. So when you go to someone say myself, we'll then, we'll take it off. And then as, as a shamanic practitioner as well, you'll work with a full team of guides. So as one guide is taking it off, one guide is freezing it, one guide is getting ready to remove it. Some other sets of guides are actually keeping the client calm. In some cases, when I used to do one-on-one, um, -on -one in, in, when I was in the same room as a client, sometimes the client will be energetically tied to the table to actually stop them lifting up and punching you. And I've actually seen that happen. I once went to, I went to watch a shaman clear somebody of a reptilian. And this person came in, he was male, big fella. And she sat down with him and I'm like, he is going to hit her. He's going to, he's going to bray her. Honestly, I'm not joking. He was like that. Honestly, I can't even act it because it was off the scale. And I'm like, he's, he's going to hit her. And it took a while. It took a while. And the minute it lifted, the room changed and his face changed. And it was like angelic. And he went from being this, honestly, like that, to was like a big cuddly teddy bear. It was bizarre. And this person had had violent outbursts, verbal outbursts, all kinds of things. So do you think that could have removed that? No, it needed it needed that shaman. It needed that shaman's guides. It needed to be in that shaman's space. Because when you work shamanically, your home is also part of your guides. Your home is part of your team. So even though I work energetically at the minute, it's still part of my guide. It's still part, the home is still an entity within itself. So it's still being an energetic being. So, and, it, and it's for your safety as well. It's for your safety as well, because the more people, the more energies, the more people you can bring into the healer, yourself, your spirit team will also be observing. Their spirit team will also be observing. It's safer for you and it's more support for you. And because afterwards you can feel quite ill. So entities can sabotage your healing path. This does happen. This very sadly happens. Not all the time, but now and again you'll get a client that absolutely adores you, thinks the sun shines out of your arse until you start the healing. It doesn't happen often, but now and again it does. And the entity, if there's a stronger one, then it sees that, oh my God, this she's coming, she's taking cards off, she's healing traumas, she's doing the chakras. Oh, God, she's not, she's not, she is not taking me off. 
She's not taking me off this one. She's not having it. She's a bitch. Honestly, she's evil. She's dark. She doesn't know what she's doing. And I'll tell you what, do. I'll make you ill. I'll make you so ill that when you've had your healing session, you never want healing again from her, from him, from them. Because I don't want to lose control of you. And if the client isn't strong enough, they flip out. They flip out. And it comes in at you and the client attacks you. And it is an energetic attack because also that being is also... Uh, is also functioning through the client and no matter what you say no matter what you do you are dead to the client it's finished it's game over which is it's sad it's sad but it happens um and there's nothing you can do about it there's nothing you can't pin the client down you can't do it behind the back you've just got to let them go because actually if it's that strong where it can affect a client to an extent like that where it thinks that the healing they're having is evil, then what the hell could it do to you if you carry on healing it? If you carry on healing the client? Now you may say, well, the poor client, but actually, and this is why I say during my sessions with you, you have to become stronger. You have to become stronger because if you're still weak and you're still vulnerable or you're still toxic, it'll use that. It will use that. It, they, they sabotage your diet. They sabotage your marriage. They sabotage your working life. They can they, they can make you kill yourself. You know, the, the vast majority of suicides will be entity related because to kill yourself is not a normal path to go it's not a normal path to go so they can make you kill yourself they can put you in a psychiatric unit you know if you go into a psychiatric unit and you talk to doctors that are maybe becoming more aware of this they will say it's odd it's very odd um and that would be in extreme cases so this is why going forward from watching this video you start to claim your sovereignty back that's not going to remove it, but that's going to show it that you are going to claim your sovereignty back. You're not going to go toxic with the healer. You're not going to go toxic with... I mean, it can. I remember one person, and I'm sure she wouldn't mind me sharing this, which is not with us anymore. Um, she went for a massage. She went for a massage, and she laid on the treatment bed, and she flipped. She flipped. And to such an extent, she couldn't have facials, she couldn't have massages... When I started doing Reiki, she couldn't have Reiki. This person had something demonic on her because she'd actually seen it. She'd seen it in the telly looking back at her. She was a heavy, heavy drinker. And sadly, it in the end, it claimed her. It did what it needed to do and it claimed her because bless her heart, she had the most potential to be one of the kindest people, but it claimed her. Claimed her via health issues and all kinds of things. Um, and that's what it does. It, it, it's, it's, it's a complex, it's a complex situation because actually ultimately it's fearful because it needs a host to be able to function with humanity in the way that it wants to and needs to. But ultimately as well, there will also be a chink of light within it. A chink of light, there's a chink of light within everything. And... <clears throat> Like when we when we take them off, we send them to a place where they're rehabilitated. Um, we don't just take them and flip them off into the universe because they're angry. They're scared in some. Depending on what they are, they're angry. They're scared. Um, they, they, they see healing and and actually when when I'm doing it and I, I suppose all the healers are doing it, it's about being of love. It's not about going right. I'm going to roll up my sleeves and I'm coming in and I'm going to get you because if you do that, boof, it will bounce you and it will bounce your client. It's about going in with love. It's about going in with love, and understanding that this is a being of the universe. It's another being, and all beings should be shown respect. All beings, beings of light, beings of dark, because if you don't respect it, if you goad it, it'll goad you back. Ghost hunts are another thing that can bring in entities, dead people, ghosts, because entities love graveyards. We all know the story of Peter Sutcliffe that worked in a graveyard, that apparently had a situation in a graveyard where a gravestone started to talk to him. I believe that was an entity. Of course, there will be other things that happened with that man, but that was another layer of the onion. So when you go to ghost hunts, when we watch things like Most Haunted, 
when we go, I mean, this is a theatre production, when we go and watch that as a theatre production, that is God in spirit. I once went years ago on a ghost hunt before I did this work and I was totally naive to it. And it was a Pendle Witch thing. And it was on a walk, which I couldn't do the walk, it was really hot. And a lot of us just stayed at the bottom. And I stayed and there was a white witch that I got talking to and her guide was one of the Pendle Witches. And she says that one of the, was it, oh God, Yvette Fielding had done a most haunted thing where she'd goaded one of the Pendle Witches. She called her a slag on all sorts. It was disgusting. It's actually around about the time I was like, yeah, we're not watching this anymore. And after that, um, Yvette's life went downhill. The, the, the most haunted stopped. She had health complaints. And this white witch said to me that that was one of the Pendle Witches that were attacking her. Because they went into their space, they were attacking her. So if you think if somebody came into your home now and started attacking you, you'd fight back. You'd fight, you're not going to go, okay, okay, it's fine. You'd fight back. So ghost hunts, horror movies. Um, I once went on another, I used to do ghost hunts all the time. This is years, and this is in the noughties, before I did this work. I don't touch up the marge ball now. And I remember being in a ghost hunt in Temple Newsom House, which is in Leeds, West Yorkshire, and I got thumped on the back. Um, didn't do anything apart from what I was in the room. So things like Ouija boards, um, table tipping, glass work, anything with yes or no. Being careful with your pendulum as well. Um, because I've seen pendulum work go crazy as well. Pendulum, for although it's a crystal, you've got to have a real good relationship with your guide. You've got to have a real good relationship with your guide and really make sure that they step in with that. Um, Doing spiritual work when you're under the influence of drink or drugs or if you're hungover. So if you're doing healing, I mean, I've known healers that have gone out for a pint and gone and done Reiki. I'm like, oh, shit, you're not. Shit, you're not. Or they've gone out and done readings and they've had a drink beforehand. Or going for readings in pubs as well. So when you go for readings in pubs, I, I put my hand up, done it before, before I knew any different weird experience because pubs are riddled with them, riddled with them. Anywhere where your vibration's lowered. Um, having a lack of respect for life as well. Having a lack of respect for life. Showing the universe that you're very easily manipulated. Very easily taken over. Um, trauma, illness, disease can bring them in as well. So it's about looking after yourself going forward. I mean, I used to have police officers that I'd treat and cleanse that. I mean, one in particular became really ill with it. Because it was picking up all sorts of things, all not no no fault of his own, no fault of his own, um, but all sorts of things. So if you work in police, if you work in fire, ambulance, NHS, courts, if you work in a pub, where do you work? Do you work in a happy, vibrant, fulfilling place? You're going to be all right. But if you work in a place where there's trouble and strife and torment, get yourself regularly checked. You go for your eyes testing, we go for our blood tests, we go for all kinds of things, smears and all of that. Go for yourself regular checking in because something can be nipped out early doors rather than letting it fester there. And then going forward, smudging before work, smudging after work, looking after yourself, um, not over drinking, not overeating, not going into gambling, making sure you've got a stable home environment around you. It's all self-care. It's all about looking after yourself. Let's have some more water. Drinking water, lots of water as well. So say you're going to a family party, or say you're going to, I don't know, your mother-in-law's for a meal, and you think, God, the energy's there. You get a glass of water, and you just look at the water, or the bottle, so you take the lid off. You don't even take the lid off. You can just look at it and go, protection 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 immunity simple as that um you can do the same with your food um be careful who cooks for your meals as well because i can go to a restaurant and i can end up ill after going for a restaurant meal because if someone's angry when they're cooking food it's a form of spelling they put that anger into the food it goes into your gut you feel shocking afterwards so, coarse sea salt showers, it's the cooking salt. It's not Himalayan salt or Epsom salts. It's the cooking salt you get off your supermarket shelf. You can also buy it off Amazon or online, but make sure it's the coarse sea salt. Handful of it in a plastic jug. Buy two plastic jugs, handful in a plastic jug, 
boil your kettle up, fill it up, dissolve it, dissolve it, dissolve it by mixing it between two jugs. Go get your shower, go get your bath. So if you've saved on your shower, you have your shower as normal, wash your hair, turn your water off, close your eyes, bite your lips so you don't taste it and tip it over, making sure it's gone cool, making sure it's gone cool. And then don't rinse it off, get off and towel yourself. So if you work in one of those places or you've been to a funeral or you've been to a pub and you think, or you're just feeling ropey or it's just an, an, an act of self-care for yourself. Um, if you've had your bath, you have your bath, you stand up, you empty the water out again, close your eyes, bite your lips in over your head. And again, it stops things from reattaching. And, it, and these are all practices that can help you going forward to keep you cleansed. And the more that you can do for yourself, the last less chance have you've got of something coming in. But <clears throat> even if you do get something, it doesn't mean to say you're a bad person. It doesn't mean to say you've done anything wrong because everybody gets them in one way, shape or form. It could be you've got um, objects from a past life. It could be that you've picked something up in childhood. Children pick them up as well, which is really, really tragic. Um, children that are, you know, why do you think there's so much horrific childhood bullying at the minute? Why do you think children commit crime? Because children come to the earth pure. So why do why are schools full of bullies? Because of entities. And also, yes, because of things they're seeing at home, things they're experiencing at home, things that they're exposed to at home, but also entity interference. We've got a lot of beautiful children that are on this planet at the minute that are getting infiltrated. So it's about looking after your child again, not filling them full of fear about the ghoulies and the ghosties that are going to latch on, but teaching them empowerment, teaching them self-care techniques. Um, being careful of what they're what they're um, open to and what what's going on in other parents' homes, and you know eventually as this uh, starts to change and starts to grow, this will get less and less. Um, so removal, removal. So go to someone that is trained in entity removal. And before we go any further, I sat here right now. I am fully booked until October, November. So if you actually booked in now for shamanic healing, you wouldn't get seen for your actual healing. I don't think, I'm not sure, depending on what dates I've got available, until the end of October, November. So I'm not sat here thinking I've got no clients. So I'm going to go online and I'm going to go onto YouTube and I'm going to do a video that gets me lots of clients coming through the door because that's not where I'm at at the minute. I'm fully booked, stacked up. Um, so I don't need more clients. I don't need more clients at this present because like I said, you're not going to be seen until October, November time. You go to someone that can remove them. You go to a healer that is aware of them because that's another issue at the minute. A lot of healers go, there's no such thing as entities. Rubbish, rubbish, rubbish. There is such thing as entities. You go to someone that is trained that has been trained, that has been certified. Because that's another thing at the minute, these healers popping up from nowhere and you've got to be careful because to, yes, you could have the gift of it and not everyone can remove entities, but you also have need to have been with a mentor, someone that can teach you looking after yourself, the basics, that can make sure that you're working safely, that can put you through your paces to make sure that you are working safely. So, Making sure that if you want entity removal, you're going for an entity removal session. Here, here hangs my other point. At the minute, I'm seeing this as well. Many people are. So say that. So say you go for a Reiki session, and the Reiki teacher or the Reiki master or the Reiki practitioner says to you afterwards, "I've removed an entity as well." Now that's where you need to be concerned, because wait a minute. Okay. I came for Reiki, but you've removed an entity. How have you removed an entity? I just I just called Michael in and I just sent Reiki to it. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Again, that's like the ch 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 That's not going to help. That's not... Now, unless... Say you came here and say I'm doing a Reiki session and say something really started to spiral and I thought I need to clip this off. Um, then, yes... Because the person that's doing the Reiki is not only trained in Reiki, but they're also trained in entity removal. But being mindful of that, because, again, 
it, it, it's not just a case, I mean I say snippy, it's not just a case of snipping and making it sound a lot easier than what it is, but just being mindful of that because that's another thing within the spiritual community at the minute. People are not just focusing on what their practice is. I can do that, I can do that, I can do that, I can see that, I can do that and I can do that. And you can't. It's like if I start if I sat down here now and I started talking about astrology, but then I started saying, but astrologers are all doing it wrong. I'd hope you'd think, wait a minute, she's not an astrologer. She doesn't even do astrology. Or if I sat down here now and started talking about crystal healing, I don't do crystal healing. I'm not trained in crystal healing. Yes, I've got lots of crystals around me. Yes, when I'm doing the healing grids, there's crystals up, and I can do the and I can incorporate into my own into my own healing. But I'm not a crystal healer. I'm not someone that could come onto a YouTube video and teach you about crystals, all the different crystals, because. You know, they used to be, I don't know if he still does it, but there's a television programme that, um, what's his name, used to do? God, Gordon Ramsay. And basically, it were, it were restaurants that were struggling. And he'd go into these restaurants and he'd look at the menus. And when the menus were huge, he'd say, that's a, that's a red flag. Because actually, to have such a huge menu for a chef... You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't specialise your craft if you're doing all of these different specialities. Curry's Italian, pizza, you know, fish and chips, soups and all of that. So it's about having a small menu. When you go onto websites and you can do this and I can do this and I can do that and I can do this and I can do the other and I can do this. And it's like, wait a minute, you're looking for a, a tarot and they're all banging on about astrology or... Even, you know, even if some astrologers are doing it now, they'll go on and they're starting to do tarot readings and they're starting to do it. You know, what? You know, do what you're good at. Be mindful of that. Be mindful of people that, you know, say if I started sat here talking about Buddhism or Hinduism or Sikhism or Christianity or I was started talking about, I don't know, other modalities of belief systems. Now, we all know the bare basics and they can be weaved into videos. But if I came on preaching about what Christians should be doing and what Buddhism should be doing and what this and what that, it's a red flag. It's a red flag, you know. Why would someone that sells angel sprays be sat there telling you how to remove entities? When was the last time they did it? And then they move on to telling you how to buy it and you're buying it through their business and you're giving them money. So making sure that you go to a reputable healer, making sure that you get regular sessions as well. Because I've said this. And it's not about keeping you anchored. At regular sessions, I'll say, you know, so say you're booking for me. And with me, your first sessions with me for, for the shamanic healing is one 45-minute consultation and then two two-hour healing sessions, six to eight weeks apart. Um, and then we have, like, the top-up session, which I've got clients that will just use at once a year or twice a year. So that's what I mean by regular. I'm not talking about coming every month because, again, that's on the red flag. If, unless you're going through a trauma, unless you're going through a trauma and you need, the, I'd say for that, depending on what the client's going through, say you're going through a trauma, you need your regular AK. Fair enough. Even then, I'd say four to six weeks, when a healers want you to come back every single week or every single month, it's like on and on and on and on and on forever more. That's a red flag. Because ultimately, as a healer, what you want is you want to get that person to a place where they only need to pop in now and again. And the, the, the more healing they have, the less they need to pop in. Um, so being mindful of people that want to see you every week or every two weeks. It's why the group healings are every six to eight weeks. Because your body then needs chance to cleanse itself, to realign itself, to readjust itself. Um, and people always say, oh, can't you just see me? I like, won't well, we no, because it'll make you well. Can I, actually too much healing can make you well. It can, it can be too much for the system. So having suitable amount of times between your sessions. Having a healer that's not working where they're banging one after the other end, because that is also a red flag when, you know, that they see it, that you, as you're sat in the waiting room, there's other people leaving and the one after the other, after the other, after the other, after the other, because there needs to be time to cleanse down. So when I'm doing the shamanic healing, it'll be in the morning and one in the afternoon. I don't see, when I'm doing the shamanic healing, Reiki is different because it's a different modality, but with the shamanic healing, there's time needed before, there's time needed after to readjust. Can you imagine if I've just spent two hours nipping loads of trauma out of somebody, entities, demonic stuff, and all that kind of stuff, curses, 
I'll do a video about that at some point as well. And then I pop into your healing where you just need a little bit of titivating, but I'm bringing in all that heaviness. So it's about a healer that looks after themselves, a healer that cleanses themselves. Oh, I'm enjoying this. So removal healers, get a reputable healer. Um, someone that you're comfortable with. Um, and also bear in mind that entities as well as cords as well as curses don't want to be removed my tummy is now rumbling so what they'll try and do is they'll try and sabotage your healing session i've had this happen to me i remember my husband because he was actually the first one to have shamanic healing it wasn't me i remember i went with him for his healing i remember i got really bad diarrhea that came on like that and i remember thinking at the time this is years ago probably 2017 18 I remember thinking at the time, this is this is something to do with me not want something with me not wanting to see this healing. So I actually raked myself between the where we lived and, and the healer's house, and I got into the healer's house, and the diarrhea stopped, just stopped, and then I found out. I mean, I've had. I mean, should I talk about monster? I've had curses removed. I've had chips removed, that's another thing, chips in your neck, chips in your heart, chips in your groin, chips, I don't mean fish and chips, no, there was salt and vinegar, I'll talk about that in a minute, chips, um, all kinds of, and that's normal, that I did a lot of trauma, I did a lot of addiction issues as well, so it's normal, and that's normal for most people to have a lot removed early doors, um, but then as you start to walk into your path and you start to have your sessions and you start to learn about self-care, it gets less and less. Or if th something does try and come in, you can, you've can got more chance of batting it off. Um, so it tried to stop me going because then I watched him have his healing and I was like, I need this. And yeah, they can sabotage your healing. They can sabotage your sessions. They can make you ill. They can make you really anxious. They can make you hate the healer. They can make you hate the modality. It doesn't happen often, thank God. But when it does, it doesn't. As the healer, you feel it. Because that being is going... <laughs> it's like, nah. no, no go, no go area. Because if, if, if the client isn't going to be strong enough or chooses to be strong enough... But there's no chance, no chance. You'll, you've got no chance because the client's also going to want to release it as well. So say if you've had a, an entity on you and it's been causing you to be a drinker and drinking addiction or any other form of addiction and you take the entity, we take the entity off and you're going to be like, Claire, I still want a pint. Claire, I still want to overeat. You told me I had an entity on me that was making me do this. This is where I say, this is where you have to do your work. Because you've had something in your energy field infiltrating your energy, infiltrating your thought process. Going forward, you then as the individual, once that energy is gone, has to then change your thought process. So you will still have the cravings. You will still feel like you need a fag or a drink or whatever or a big piece of chocolate cake or whatever. And again, just because you want a chocolate cake, don't really say you want an entity. But if you're going to sit down and eat the whole cake, oh, there's a problem, Houston. Okay, you know, just because I don't know, it's it's a fine line. It's a fine line. You know, if you can, if you're just happy at the odd glass of wine, fair enough. But if you don't want to deck the bottle, I mean, alcohol. You know, why do they call it spirits? Why do they call it the demon drink? Um, but that's when you'd go forward, and that's when you then have to work with your own rehabilitation, working on your diet, working on changing your mindset doing a therapy again be, be mindful of healers that just want you to come to me i just want you to do what, what i want. i don't want you to go to therapy now hereby hangs another tale so say if somebody comes to me and they have shamanic healing and then they say to me claire um be in between the six weeks of seeing you and seeing you again i've gone to another shamanic healer you're actually out the door with me Ooh, claire why and i'll tell you why because different healers work in different ways and actually having too many people is really unethical. But say if someone comes to me and they have acupuncture or they have Reiki, not a problem, or they have crystal healing, but the same modality because it muddies the waters. It's a bit like using two different heart surgeons for a heart operation. So one surgeon does it and then they, they, they work differently. And that surgeon may have done things to the heart to keep it stable that that surgeon doesn't know about. And it's the same with like orthopedic surgery. So being not going, it's a red flag is that when someone says, I've been to this healer, that healer, this healer, that healer, this healer, that healer. Like, oh my God. 
Oh my God. Because when somebody goes to a lot of healers, unless it's, you know, I go for acupuncture and I go for crystal healing and rake, and fair enough. But it's when you just think, you know, if you know, you know, you're just like, oh. Um, because ultimately healing isn't about looping. It's about healing and moving forward with your life. So chips. And remember, it's not salt and vinegar chips. So chips can be placed into the energetic field. Into the neck, back of the neck, into the chest, controlling the heart, into the groin, controlling your sexuality and your life and your sexual being and your... I'll explain it very briefly without going into too much detail on a YouTube video. So, you've got a chip in your neck. Why have I got a chip in my neck? Because basically, right, reptilian energies, they like to control humans, so they'll put an energetic chip in your neck. So they'll control you, they'll control your thoughts, your mindset. Have you ever been in a pub and you've seen someone that is totally uncontrollable? It's a bit like when someone's got a, a game machine going and they're controlling you. It's like what they do. It's, it's almost like they've got a console. You know, like the Titan console, that kind of thing. Um, PlayStation console. Chip you up. Let's have fun. Um, so most people, if you've got one chip, you're going to have all the chips. So that chip there controls your behaviours, controls your attitudes. Your chip in your heart centre controls you controls your heart centre. So that's when your heart's closed up, when you can't have a normal healthy relationship, when you don't love yourself, when you can't open your heart, there's a problem. In the groin area, it's when you become a deviant in the bedroom. It's when people rape and all that kind of thing, or when there are other issues involved in that, which is a video. Oh, do I want to go down that avenue? Oh. Um how far do you going to go with this, Claire? <sighs> you open a can of worms. How far she? <laughs> um, it's when there's deviant issues around your sexuality, around your sexual being. You you're you're sleeping around. You're you're not grounded in your in your sexuality. You're not grounded in your sexuality. It's becoming toxic. It's you're becoming toxic. Um, your relationships in that area becoming toxic you know how do you know you've got these problems then claire pain in your neck god my neck hurts my shoulders oh god my neck's so stiff all the time all the time chest pains issues with your chest so whatever it is you've got groin pains you know you're having miscarriages you're having heavy horrible periods you're having painful periods. You're having relationships and one night stands that are just toxic and all of that kind of stuff. Um, maybe there's infertility issues there, etc. Again, there's also other reasons for that. But yes, and again, guess what? Most people have them. So if ever somebody says you've got a chip or whatever, don't think, oh God, it's, I'm a bad person. Honestly, you're not. You're really not. It's just, that's where we've been. And they can easily be removed with the healer that can do it properly and get rid of the chip and get put and get rid of all of that and make sure that you're and replace it with light and all of that. Um, you know, where would you rather be having it done? On your own in your living room, you know, open for best, or in a sacred space, either in a healer's studio or in your own living room, where you know your energy is surrounded by your guides, your higher self, where you know you've got ancient guides surrounding you, where you're in a healing energy. Because, you know, shamanism, we also open up, um, either the shamans or the shamanic practitioners open up to healing. We open up an energy portal for you, so you're within an energy portal that's protected. You've heard us recording all the directions and all of that. Um, so, yes, chips. And then going forward, looking after yourself, making the better choices, watching your mood swings, watching your mental health, being present with yourself, exercise reducing and healing your addictions, becoming more accountable, becoming more present, stepping out of victim mode. And you know what? It takes a long time. It's not a quick fix. It takes years. And it's the layers of an onion. And then you, you're working with the moons and the cycles and the portals and the solstices. And gradually you're getting stronger. Now, we don't want healing Taurus that just come in. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try shamanic healing. I've heard about it on YouTube. So I just want to try shamanic healing. No, don't bother. Don't bother because any any authentic healer wants someone that wants to come in and really heal. They don't just want to just try it. It's not a pair of shoes. It's not a lipstick. It's not a foundation. It's not just dyeing your hair pink. 
they just you just want heal you want people that want to come in that want to heal they don't just want to try it now there's a difference between someone that goes i like the sound of that i want that i want to do that to someone that just always want to try it i've always wondered what it feels like or what it's like i just want to try it because you know what you try trying shamanic healing when we start removing cords and curses and all of that and trauma and all of that kind of stuff you feel shit you can feel really shit so if you're coming in to, to try something because you, you, your body feels ill it's like surgery it's like you go for physical surgery you've got a dodgy knee you're going to get it replaced you can't wait you're in pain you've got your hospital date you go in you wake up after the ga and you're like i feel shocking i wish i'd never had it done i feel worse than i did before I go, oh my god i've got a scar i feel sore i can't eat anything i've been sick i'm going out the other end oh my god i just want to have my own bed I feel, oh god and then you feel better. And then that's the same with, with um, energetic surgery, soul surgery, which is what shamanic healing is. I was going to say something else and it's gone. What was it? Um, yeah, that was it. So when we've removed something, so say you come for a healing with me. So say you've had a session, we've removed a card, we've removed an entity, we've removed a curse, we've, I don't know, dissolved a soul contract. After each one of those steps, so after we've removed the cord, we then do a soul and power retrieval. So all the soul fragments that you lost with having that entity there, we claim them back, we cleanse them, we put them back. We also do a power retrieval. So all the power essence that you lost, your own power essence, your own being, we call all that back. So again, if you're doing a do-it-yourself at home, you're not going to do that. You're not going to know how to claim yourself. Oh, but I can do an online meditation. It's rubbish. Don't do them. Online meditations are fine when you're doing it as a meditation. But when you start, when they start saying cord cutting removal on YouTube or whatever or entity, be careful. Be careful of it. Because just be careful. Because there can also be stuff put in those videos that can make you feel quite ill. I know. Shocking. Um, oh, squeak, squeak. Um, so that, yeah, so you can remove the entity. So your healing session will also be about removing, taking out, but it's also going to be about replacing, replacing your essence, replacing your sovereignty, building you back up again, building your chakra systems back up again, building your energetic field up again, building you up again. And why do you feel ill after healing? Because you just, like, like I've just said, with the soul surgery. So, I mean, I remember the first time I, I felt horrific I had a curse removed and I felt horrific. I thought I was dying. I thought I was dying. But if you think about it, a curse and entity, when the body has to purge it out, of course you're going to feel horrific. But it stops as each day goes on. It stops. Also as well, you could have parasitic energies within the body, within the brain, within the gut, um, within the tissue. So parasitic energies that just look like little parasites. Um parasitic in the gut would feel like diarrhea and gut issues and all that kind of things so they can also be removed um what time are we on two minutes past the hour are we going to cover anything else in the entity video so ethical healers qualified healers not influencers um be present with yourself, avoiding things like all that I've told you. You may want to go back and take notes. Not going into fear. Not going into blaming and shaming. And again as well, entities love it when we blame and shame everyone. They love that. They love it when you hate your mum, when you hate your dad, when you hate your ex-partner, when you hate the lot. And it's so sad because you'll say, yeah, but Claire, they've done the most horrific things to me. But entities feed off that. So learning about acceptance, learning about acceptance and letting go, learning about the higher teaching that comes with everything. Even the most worst things that happen to you, there's teaching there, there's karma clearing going on there. And, you know, say if you've sat with your guides pre-incarnation and you've gone, I want to learn what it is to, let me think of one, I want to learn what it is to have acceptance and peace in my life. Do you think you're going to come to life and you're just going to be accepted and peaceful? No. You're going to be born into chaos. You're going to be born into trauma because you need to learn what peace is. Because if you're just born into peace, it'd be like, is this really it? 
I would appreciate it. So you're born into situations for you to go, oh yeah. So about acceptance, not hating people, not it's it's difficult, it's very difficult. Um when people argue with you and there's no telling them, there's entities there, entity involvement. Um, it's a complex subject. So, shall we go on about more of the new age stuff? Shall I do it in this video? Shall I do a separate video on it? What time are we on? Let's do it in this video. So, the new age community. Be mindful of it. Be really mindful of it. Um, I think eventually, I think we're already starting to get this, is cult energy, brainwashing energy. Um, when you start your healing journey, you're vulnerable. We're all vulnerable. And it's very easy to want to feel part of a community. And this is another red flag. When you go onto someone's YouTube channel and they act like they're the teacher and you are the pupil. This YouTube channel is a classroom. Oh my God. This YouTube channel, Claire Thackeray, is not a classroom. It's a place where we all come together. It's a place where you look at the comment section, people swap stories, people share, share their perspectives. It's, this is not a school. This is not a classroom. You've not signed up to come to a school. You're watching a YouTube video. Be mindful of those that think that they're the teacher. I am the mentor. I am the teacher. You're the pupil. Be mindful of those that think that you need them, that you need that healer, that you need that teacher, that you need that mentor, that they need to walk you through a portal, that they need to walk you through the moon, that you, they either they need to help you understand the bigger picture that they know something that you don't know that spirit are just choosing them to do a video because spirit just trust me to do this video and this message came through just for me because my guide says you're the only one that can do this claire red flag red flag red flag um because that's just not how it works. That I am the only one that can bring this teaching through. Honestly, it's God complex. And we're going to be seeing more of it. Because the thing is, with more and more people stepping onto the healing journey, um, you'll get more followers. I know with shamanism, they, can, they proper keep you grounded. They don't want, because you're removing things like demons and all of that kind of stuff, so you can become very big-headed. You can become, I'm superhuman, you see in that as well. Oh, God. Um, and they keep, shamanism keeps you grounded, because the minute you start flying off like that, it's, it's a red, it's a red rag to a bull. It's a red rag to a bull. So about, you know, keeping yourself grounded, are they grounded, you know, People that go onto their YouTube channels and they're arguing with people or they're kicking off in the comments or they're coming and they're crying and they're having a moment and it's like, oh God, not again. Because it's just drama and it keeps you locked in. And it can be really sad when you've really admired somebody and you start to see this behaviour. But honestly, step back from it. Step back from it because, you know, Sometimes I'll get a comment and I'll think, God, I never even thought of that. And it'll be something, or an email, and everyone's got something to bring to the table. Everyone's got something to bring to the table. And bullying you because you don't get it. Oh, this is another thing as well. Doing the work. Because I'm doing the work. Well, what is doing the work? Because actually, doing the work, straight away when you say the word work, the body goes, eh. It's work. Oh my God, it's nine to five. You're going to get a briefcase out, which you're going to get on that number 56 bus. That's what the body does. It's not about doing the work. We're doing the work. And the thing is, they're reacting like this because they're not doing the work. Shut up. Back off. Unfollow. That's it. Game over. It's not about doing the work. It's about living humbly, kindly. It's about being present with yourself, being gentle with yourself, giving yourself space and time because you'll mess up. You'll make mistakes, you'll have bad days, you'll eat the chocolate cake, you'll think, oh God. But giving yourself the space, it's not about we're doing the work. This isn't about doing the work. Again, what guides are saying, it's about doing the work, like just do the work. You know, what work? Um, it's about being present with yourself. Um, oh, there's so much I can say on this subject. The, the new age community. 
It's a bit like church. I love church. I love the whole thing of church. I got married in a church. I love going into an old church and abbey to on a day out. If there's a church there, I'll be going around it. And I love the whole thing of prayer, of hymn, of community. But I don't go to church because, again, not all people within the church, but there is this brainwashing energy that can come in. This control energy. I want to. This is my tribe. I want to control. This is my flock. Why do you think they call it a flock? I'm going to be disrespectful here, but a flock is like a flock of sheep, isn't it? A flock. People want they want the YouTube channel to be the flock, where these are these are my flock of people. These I am the superior being. I'm going to sit in my pulpit and I'm going to talk down to you, and um, that's what that's happened in religion, and it's also happening in this, and also as well any kind of initiative that is coming in for good gets hijacked. We've had other initiatives within this world that may be coming in to help with racism that are fantastic, that are coming in to educate about racism, which are fantastic, that get hijacked. It's the same with this new age thing, it's getting hijacked, really badly hijacked. People are seeing that it's an opening to come and make money quick, it's to come and get your subscribers up quick. It's just to be able to have control. Narcissistic as well, narcissism in the spiritual community, well, in the new age, well, in the spiritual community as well. It's off the scale. It's really off the scale at the minute. So be mindful of that. And it's a complex one. Any more? Any more? I should pull a card. I tell you what, we'll finish with. We'll finish with a card. We'll finish with a card. Believe in your own magic by Amanda Lovelace. Oops. And see what this deck wants to say. So you may want to watch this video again and take some notes because you're in the classroom. I'm joking, but you <laughs> you may want to watch it again and just take some notes, um, especially if you're into this subject. So a card for those watching. Let me tip it round. A card for those watching for today's video. Today's message card that can help to just close the session off. Thorns. Weave together the crowns you deserve. I'll match my hair. <laughs> Weave together the crowns you deserve. Stars. You can manifest your every wish. So just whether you've got Five, ten, fifteen, twenty entities, curses, cards. Most people have a lot, okay? Because we've been here a long time, we've been here during many incarnations, we've experienced a lot. Ultimately, eventually you can get to a place where you're at peace. And this is this video, this healing, whatever you want to take from it, is about you taking forward and knowing that you can then step forward and claim your sovereignty. That we are all in this together, not to sound like a politician, but we are all in this together. And that nobody's better than each other. Nobody's better, more intelligent, knows more about Ascension Awakening. That actually we're all in this together. And that we need to try and be kinder to each other, kinder to ourselves. Because another thing that entities love is when we kick off with each other and when we're unkind, they love that. And eventually, I did say in a video ages ago, I'm not sure whether it's still on actually, because I did have a big clear out, um, was I had a vision where this new earth energy that's coming in, and I do believe there is a new earth energy coming in, of course there is, I just don't believe in this movement that's going on at the minute. Um, and I said to you, I said in the video, I don't know if I might have even been Instagram, I said it on, you know. And I said it was even demons and all kinds of energies had actually turned a corner and became healed. And I said it was, an, it was a world where we'd just come home to ourselves. We'd come home to ourselves. There was nothing to be scared of. And ultimately there isn't anything to be scared of. Um, oh, do I cover that in this video? We are all energy. We are all beings in body form. So you can have angelic beings, you can have, I mean, again, it gets even more complex because you, you can have a life where you've been an angelic being. You can have a life where you've been reptilian. You can have a life where you've been all kinds of things. But also as well, beings 
can hijack. So say there's a body waiting to be born and there's a soul waiting for this body and they're like, oh, they're building it up with the planet and then there's another being that wants to come and they can hijack it. So if you ever had a baby, and this can be a bit of a controversial subject where, or a child, where you've held the baby and you felt, oh, that's when you know that it literally is a being that's come in, a being of darkness that's come in. Um, and that's maybe for something for another video, because again, that's a whole different narrative. But this subject cannot just be covered in one video. It's something that takes a lot of a lot of getting your head round. We'll probably cover it again at another stage. Um, should we do the parting of the cards? Yes, I was hoping we'd we'd get that. Dragons slay them all. And look at that. She's got a so she's got a missing leg, but she's got a fake leg on. Do you call it, sorry if that's the wrong word. For, my next door neighbours with the beans, bang, um, prosthetic leg. And it doesn't matter what injuries you've got, how weak you feel, how vulnerable you feel, you can slay your dragons. And these are also your demons, as in your mental demons, your traumas, your heartbreaks, that, you know, a doctor, a, a prosthetist or something, I don't know, would have helped to put, you see, this is it, I love this. She went to hospital, she's got injured, she's gone to hospital, and she's had her leg fixed and they've put in place a prosthetic leg so she can walk and slay her dragons so this is the analogy of you you got you've got your stuff you've got your entities you go to a healer they take off the healer they take off the healer they take off the entity but then you're still feeling vulnerable there's always going to be a weak spot there as well there's always going to be a weak spot and basically this is all about knowing there is a weak spot but knowing also that you can slay your dragons going forward, that you can take charge of your life, that nothing is unhealable, that nothing is unremovable, that there is so much you can do as well as working with a healer, working with a therapist, working with your community, working with your life. So thanks for watching. All my other social media is below in the description. If you want to find out more about my healing modalities, go on to my website, which is below. I'm fully booked till October. Apologies. Um, October, November. But you'll be surprised at how time flies. Um, going forward, if, you're, if you've enjoyed this video, go to my playlist, Shamanic Healing, and there'll be a whole host of these other videos. I'm going to try and do more of this. So we're going to do a video where we talk about the home and how the home can be haunted. And because again, that's an interesting subject. Do all kinds of things up here. Thanks for watching. Love to all. Hope you like the hair. <laughs> and I will. I hope it's not distracted you too much. I'll see you in the next one. Take care and thanks for watching. Bye.